Okay, I think we are now recording. Okay, I think we are good to go. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone, for joining us at, at, into this webinar. Uh, I am pleased to introduce Evan Jerome. And uh, today he will be talking about the topic study and work in the New York City region. And um, I will ask everyone uh, to chat in the chat. You can uh, type your questions if you have any questions. During the presentation, you can type those so you don't forget, perhaps uh, while uh, Jerome, uh, Evan Jerome is presenting. And at the end of the session, uh, we will be able to read your questions and to answer them. So um, right now, I will start uh, introducing Education USA for, for all the attendees. So uh, if we can uh, go to the next slide, please. So briefly, I will explain uh, that Education USA is a great network of advising centers around the world. And in Mexico, we are around 26 advising centers in, in Mexico. I am Marta Beltran, uh, one of the advisors in Mexico City. And we are located in a, um, at a US space, a United States and American space, which is the uh, Benjamin Franklin Library. And there uh, we have a lot of resources to offer to you. Our objective uh, from all advisors, advisors in Education USA is provide free advice. Uh, and this, include, this includes uh, comprehensive information as complete as possible, materials, online resources, and also we uh, have um, some activities that I will present in the next slide. And due to this uh, contingency, uh, we are uh, presenting every, everything online. And uh, not at the, I mean, you can visit us at the library uh, whenever you, you want, but due to the uh, circumstances today, right now, uh, we are doing everything online. So if we can go to the next slide, please. Our main activities, as I said, uh, is, uh, to provide this free advising to everyone interested in studying in, in a university in the US. Uh, basically, we, we make activities in center, out center. It's outreach when we go to some schools and to some places, to some educational fairs uh, where we can explain what we do and the virtual activities like this webinar. And um, then I, uh, I will give, uh, the voice to uh, to pass uh, the control of the presentation to to Evan, so he can talk about this topic. Thank you very much. Uh, Evan is mute, so uh, we can unmute. Thank you. Thank you. Hola, cómo estás? Thank you, Martha and Yandi, so much. Um, again, my name is Evan Jerome. I'm the Senior Vice President with Monroe College and the King Graduate School in New York. And we're going to talk today, I think for about 15, maybe 20 minutes. And then we're going to get your questions um, through chat. And um, whatever I can do to answer them, um, I will do my best uh, to do so. And um, I want to just uh, mention, because we have a whole group here that um, we know we're in a very, uh, you know, unique situation with the public health uh, challenges with the corona and um, our thoughts and prayers are for um, anyone and any family in need. And um, uh, you know, we want to um, just uh, reflect on that uh, before we uh, talk uh, tonight. Um, obviously, there's a lot going on now in New York, um, in New York City, um, has a lot of challenges right now uh, with the public health situation. 
um, which I'll talk to, which I'll talk a little bit about. Um, hopefully, uh, the situation will improve, and um, you know, uh, and we, our thoughts and prayers uh, are for that to happen. Uh, so let's get on with this, and uh, let's talk about um, really uh, studying and working um, in the New York City region, okay? Because we're not only talking about New York City, we're talking about the tri-state region, which is New York City, Long Island, Connecticut, Westchester, New Jersey, and this is a region um, that's one of the strongest uh, economic hubs uh, in the world. Um, so, and there's a lot of opportunities for studying and for working um, as a student. So we'll talk about uh, New York. Um, we'll touch on uh, CPT and OPT. That's uh, the different programs you can legally work under as an international student. So I'll share some information about that. Um, we'll talk a little bit about uh, the expenses of uh, traveling to the United States and studying. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the different types of colleges and universities in the United States. Um, and then we'll talk about if you do get accepted to any college or university in the United States, then the next step is really trying to get your student visa. And, um, and there's a lot of uh, in good information I wanna share with you on that. And then we'll talk um, a little bit more specifically about Monroe College um, towards the end and our programs and our admissions requirements uh, as a possible uh, destination uh, for anyone who is uh, interested. So uh, Maria, let's go to the next uh, slide. Okay, so really uh, quickly, probably most of you know this already, but I'll just um, repeat. One of the strongest industries in the United States is higher education. Um, when you compare the United States to other countries around the world, um, the number of quality colleges and universities, just, um, it's immense. So I just wanted to go over what are the main types of schools, colleges and universities you might consider when you're thinking about uh, studying in the United States. So um, the first is there are private colleges and universities, and then there are public colleges and universities, okay? Public colleges and universities are really run by the state governments um, and are more connected to the government um, in the United States. Uh, public colleges and universities are usually more affordable than private colleges and universities. And a lot of times they're also bigger. Um, so the big state schools um, in the United States, uh, you probably heard of them, Penn State, Ohio State, uh, U University of Michigan. Uh, these are public uh, universities uh, and colleges. What's the difference between a college and a university in the United States? It depends upon the state, uh, but in general, universities have a substantial amount of research and postgraduate programs, master degrees and PhDs. Colleges are usually more focused on teaching, uh, less on research. 
and um, we'll go into uh, that a little bit more. Uh, private colleges are more separate uh, from the government. They operate a bit more independently and there is um, a tremendous array of different uh, private colleges and universities um, in the United States. Uh, NYU, Columbia University, uh, Pace University, Monroe College, those were all um, un considered private uh, colleges and universities. In New York, um, SUNY, which is the State University of New York, that's considered, um, you know, public. Two-year versus four-year. In the United States, uh, students can earn a degree called an associate degree. That is a two-year degree. Those degrees are at public community colleges. Community colleges are all two-year degrees. They're not four-year. And um, private colleges might also have just uh, two-year degrees, or they might have two-year and four-year. Okay, Monroe College, we offer a two-year associate degree. We offer a bachelor degree for four years. And then we have uh, masters and degrees after. Graduate schools for masters and doc doctorates. Uh, many of you might already have your bachelor degree. Now you're considering a post graduate degree, master degree, or maybe even a PhD. And um, at uh, private uh, universities or public universities, you will find um, an array of master degrees and uh, doctorate uh, degree programs. ESL, um, English uh, language, is very popular in the United States. And there's a lot of flexibility with ESL. Sometimes you could get a visa for studying for the summer. Um, sometimes you could get a visa for three months. Sometimes it could be for a year. Um, maybe it could be for two years. Um, a lot of, there's a, a lot of international students. Uh, they sometimes start with ESL in the United States and they go to a, a good ESL school and then they pathway into a college or university. Okay, uh, sometimes you could get accepted to an ESL school with conditional acceptance to a college and university. Um, that's a little bit with the visa. Uh, next slide, Maria. Okay, I just wrote this. Um, it's about making an informed decision. It's about what is right for you. It's about asking the right questions. So whatever institution, whatever college or university you decide to go to, make sure you do the research, ask the good questions, and you make an intelligent uh, decision. Okay. Can you transfer if you arrive in the United States? and it's just not the right fit? The answer is usually yes. You could usually transfer, um, but the more research you can do, the better. Education USA is a tremendous resource for you right in Mexico City. Um, they can advise you and give you great information on what could be the best fit uh, for a college or university, okay? Uh, next slide. Okay, let's just talk about uh, New York City for a minute. Um, obviously, you know, right now it's going through a challenging time, but uh, New York City 
is the business capital of the world um, to you know a lot of a lot of the world New York City is the capital of the finance industry Wall Street um, it's the capital it's a capital of real estate it's the it's a capital of media uh, television film communications uh, print media magazines um, it's the capital of technology in the United States outside of Silicon Valley um, in California New York City has really become the second largest tech hub so all the big tech companies are in New York City now you know maybe not all of them but you know a lot of them Google Amazon, Apple, uh, Salesforce, where Monroe, we use their uh, software. Uh, so the two fastest growing industries right now in the New York City region in terms of job growth are technology and healthcare. So, um, so there's, there's so many um, industries in New York, um, and New York is a leader, an international leader, um, with uh, so many companies, including, you know, the Fortune 500 companies. I've been in New York for a long time. <laughs> when I was a kid, you know, you went to New York City, and you know, you needed to really kind of watch yourself a little bit more in terms of crime, and. New York City is really the safest, largest city in the United States now, or one of the safest, largest city. Uh, the NYPD, which is the New York Police Force, um, it's a national leader in law enforcement, and uh, New York City's, um, you know, made, made has made great strides. So overall, New York City is a very safe place to be as an international student. It's a big city though. Um, there's about, you know, 12 million people, I believe in New York City, 35 million within the tri-state area. So, um, you know, you still, you know, need to have your wits about you and, uh, you know, research where you're going and different areas, but overall it's become a very uh, safe city uh, to be in. Um, 800 languages in New York City. New York City is called the melting pot of the world. Uh, the Big Apple uh, is the nickname for New York City. Um, pretty much every country is represented in the population in New York City. Um, and that's what makes New York City so unique, right? It's so diverse. You know, you go down the street, um, you know, you go into work, you know, you look around, it's so diverse, it's so diverse. So if you're interested in studying in the New York area, you really need to be someone who braces, uh, embraces diversity, okay? You like to meet people from all over the world. You like to meet people from Africa, from the Caribbean, from the Middle East, um, and you like to try food from all over the world because we know New York City has great food. And um, I think I read uh, the other day, something like 10% of all the restaurants in the United States are in New York City. Okay, so there's, there's so much culture, um, there's so much diversity, uh, there's so many immigrants uh, who come to New York for the opportunity. 36% of the population is foreign born. I bet, I bet that percentage is even uh, higher now. Next slide, uh, Maria. Okay. <laughs> so we went from New York City to something very uh, uh, more technical. Um, but I wanted to uh, mention this. Um, 
So uh, if you do manage to study um, in the New York region, um, or for that matter, any um, city in the United States, there are ways you can study and also work, okay? And you need to educate yourself on this uh, because there are regulations uh, that you need to abide by. Uh, but there's a lot of opportunities here, okay? So um, I'm just gonna talk generally, and I'm not an expert on this. Uh, at most at colleges and universities, they have individuals called CVIS advisors, and they're experts on the regulations, you know, for international students. I'm working more with um, enrollment and uh, and admissions right now, but um, in terms of work opportunities. Uh, CPT, it's called Career Practical Training. Um, it's really popular for graduate students who are earning their master degree. A little bit less popular for undergraduate bachelor students. But this is a program where you can work, get paid by a company or an organization while you're in school studying okay there are jobs on campuses of colleges and universities those are called student worker positions those are sometimes kind of tough to get um but but they're out there um i'm talking here about jobs you could get from companies um and organizations okay so i'll just mention a a, a few just important things um, for CPT, usually for undergraduate, um, you can only start CPT after two semesters, which is a traditional academic year, okay? For graduate study, you could possibly start CPT in your first semester, although we do recommend students get adjusted to their college or university in their first semester, and then they start CPT in the second semester. The job has to be aligned with the degree that you're studying, okay? So if you um, get a job at Google in technology, um, you cannot be studying uh, criminal justice or uh, culinary arts, okay? If you um, are in an MBA program, you need to find a job uh, related to what you're studying um, in the MBA, finance, marketing, uh, human resources, um, et cetera. So it has to be aligned with the degree that you're studying, okay? And um, you cannot study in the United States relying on this income to get you through paying uh, tuition, okay? You need to, can you guys hear me? Okay. Um, okay, great. You, you need to um, show the college or university that you're going to that you have the funds to get through at least two semesters, which is a traditional academic year. And you're not, um, you're not relying on uh, Okay, it, okay, we can hear him well. You, you said you could hear me, so I'm continuing. 
Try to turn up my volume. No, uh, Evan, we can hear you pretty well. Okay, fine, fine. Thank you. Okay, so, um, so the two things, so the two things are, um, it has to be connected to the degree that you're studying and you cannot be relying um, just on this income to get you through your uh, studies, okay? You could do uh, CPT possibly full-time, 40 hours a week in the graduate program, but for undergraduate, um, it needs to be part-time less than 30 hours a week, okay? So, um, in, in a nutshell, again, I don't wanna get in too, many, too much details here, but if you're thinking about studying in September and working um, in the New York City region, you wanna start uh, networking and seeing if there could be some possible job opportunities for you at different companies or different organizations. Also certain colleges and universities through their career services department could also help you try to open up those opportunities. Okay, let's go to the next slide. So um, CPT is working while you're in school. Optional practical training is a year working full time after you earn your degree, okay? So if you're going for your associate degree, once you graduate, you have a full year, you could be in the United States and you could possibly work, okay? After you earn your bachelor degree, you have a full year. After you earn your master's degree, you have a full year you could work um, in the United States. And this could be full-time. It could also be part-time. In terms of STEM, which are programs related to science and engineering. And if you Google it um, under uh, CVIS, S-E-V-I-S, -E uh, there are certain STEM programs, there are like 50 different programs. After you earn your master degree with a STEM program, you could, you have three years of OPT in the United States, three years of OPT in the United States. It might also be three years for the bachelor degree. I'm not sure, but I know it's definitely for the master's degree. So for an example, if a student from Mexico City attended, let's say um, Columbia University and they earned a master degree in computer science. After graduation, they have the opportunity to be in the United States for three years to work. Okay, so this is a tremendous uh, opportunity. Okay, the goal here is for each of you in terms of your resume and your career advancement to um, study in the United States at a good school and then have that work experience that you can add additional value to your resume and you could then bring with you to Mexico or to um, any country in the world. You know, there's a lot of value uh, to that, okay? Um, let's go to the next slide. Okay, so I mentioned this before, but I'll just kind of repeat it. You know, listen, look, at, look at right now with this situation around the world, one of the silver linings, right, is the technology. 
that the technology has been so incredible. And um, whether through social media um, or all the LinkedIn, um, all the different platforms, all of you should have LinkedIn uh, profiles. Um, you want to start uh, networking uh, with your friends, with your relatives, um, with different companies and organizations uh, to see if you could open up some opportunities um, in terms of work in the New York area. Um, you know, the world's changed, right? There's no, at least in New York, you know, you get a job through who you know, through networking, through LinkedIn, um, through going to websites of the companies. <laughs> and it's all digital in terms of sending in your resume and profile. Okay, so now is a good opportunity, um, you know, maybe because a lot of us are working remote to just make sure um, we update our resumes um, that they're looking, you know, really, really good. Uh, contacting uh, community organizations, you might have religious affiliations, um, whatever your interests are, um, I'm sure there's some sort of connection in New York for an organization, cultural institution. So um, try to start making those contacts, okay? Whatever college or university you go to, um, contact their career services department, okay? I can't talk for other colleges and universities. At Monroe College, we have a really strong uh, career services department that helps students find um, opportunities in New York, okay? Now, we talked about getting uh, CPT and OPT, which are more paid positions. But um, there's also a lot of value if you work at um, a company or organizations that, that's really reputable and it's a free internship, you're not getting paid, right? You know, if you got um, a free internship at Google for the semester, there's probably more value than if a small IT company, you know, was gonna pay you for the semester, right? You know, having uh, that experience, uh, getting into that network, uh, having Google on your resume, you know, can go a long way. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Okay, so I'm just gonna mention really quickly, um, whatever college or university you look to apply to, um, these are certain things um, you have to consider in terms of finances. You have to look on the website at their tuition. Um, you have to look at their fees. Okay, sometimes colleges and universities, you know, we, you know, they could maybe hide some of those fees. Um, usually not, they're usually right up on the website. Uh, but you wanna look at the tuition. Um, in the United States, tuition is usually communicated by semester. <laughs> so um, you have to, you know, add up how many semesters you're gonna be planning to be at the college or university to look at what the total cost is. In the United States, a traditional academic year is two semesters. For example, September to May, okay? Most colleges and universities, September semester is called fall. Um, January semester is called spring semester. Okay, starts late January, goes to the end of May. Most colleges and universities have a summer session 
uh, Monroe College, we have a full semester over the summer. Um, so look at the academic calendar of any college and college and university um, for the upcoming year. So right now we're in early April and most colleges and universities were recruiting for the 2020-2021 academic year, which is traditionally September to late May. Okay. Um, housing and meals. Okay, if you're if you need to be in the dormitories in housing, look at what the costs are for that. Okay. If you're able to stay with family, that's probably a cheaper option. In terms of getting an apartment, um, and I, I can only really talk for New York uh, City and the New York region. Um, there are apartment rentals, uh, there's websites. Craigslist is a very popular website um, to find a roommate, uh, to get an apartment in New York. And there's also um, student housing in New York separate from the college or university. There are actually companies in New York that have like apartment buildings designed just for students. Okay, so you could Google that and uh, see what uh, comes up. Um, but you have to decide if you want to be on campus in terms of living or what's called a commuter student. You'll hear that word a lot if you come to the United States, commuter, meaning you're living off campus and then you're traveling uh, to campus to take your classes. <laughs> in terms of uh, books and academic materials, again, I can't talk for every college and, and university um, but at Monroe College, we're mostly digital. We're mostly um, eBooks. It's really affordable. And sometimes if you need a textbook, um, you know, you go to Barnes and Noble, Barnes and Noble, you go to Amazon and you order uh, either a new one or a used one. And um, and, you know, depending upon your program, uh, there might not be any textbooks. The professors might just do everything uh, digitally and articles, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, academic materials, you know, depending upon your program. At Monroe College, we have um, a chef culinary school uh, to become a, um, a chef. You have to purchase your steak knives and that's like an extra $150. Uh, different, different programs, there might be some extra academic materials that you have to purchase. So make sure you get the research, you know, on that. Uh, transportation, you know, uh, factor that in when you're coming up with your expenses and your budget. You know, if you're living uh, with your with family in New Jersey and the college is in New York City, you know, if you take the train in, that could be um, $15 a day, right? If you're um, getting around New York City by subway, you have to get an easy pass, you have to calculate all of that. Um, if you wanna, you know, get a car, you know, when you're in New York, um, or rent a car, uh, factor all of that in, uh, transportation, uh, miscellaneous costs, okay? I didn't really even talk about meals. Um, in New York City, there's what's called cheap eats, where you could get good food cheaply. And then there's, you know, middle uh, in terms of cost. And then there's, you know, the most uh, expensive restaurants, you know, that you could go to, um, you know, but uh, it matters where you live um, and, and how 
you do it, but um, you could live in New York City affordably. You could also live in New York City and spend a lot of money, okay? So do your research on that um, and decide, uh, you know, what's your budget and what, you, what can you afford, okay? Um, bank statements and sponsors, um, I'm not going to get into the details, but once you get accepted to a college or university, then you have to um, apply to try to get your student visa and you need a sponsor for that. Okay, your sponsor could be you, it could be your parents, it could be your uncle, it could be your grandma, grandfather, um, it could be a really close friend, okay? You have to um, get the documents to show that your sponsor has enough money in the bank to pay for your education and your living expenses uh, when you're in New York. Okay, next slide, please. Okay. Um, so in general, uh, like I mentioned, um, what I want you to do in terms of this journey is think of it in three chapters, okay? Chapter one is doing your research on what college or university is the best fit for you or which ones, because you might want to apply to, you know, two or three, right? Then applying, submitting all of your documents that you need to do for acceptance, and then getting accepted, okay? Getting a letter uh, via email that you're accepted. That's chapter one, okay? Chapter two is, I got accepted. Now I need to apply for what's called my I-20. That's gonna enable me to make an appointment at the embassy in Mexico City to try to get my student visa. So chapter two is, um, like I said, do I have the funds, the finances, or do I have a sponsor who has documented finances to be able to pay for my education? Okay, and this is very important. <laughs> what the US government requires is that you or your sponsor show that you have the funds, the money to pay for two semesters that you have the funds in the bank for two semesters. You don't have to show that you have funds for the whole degree. You have to show that you have funds for at least two semesters. So if um, tuition and housing and meals is let's say 15,000 US for one semester at a college or university, you need to show um, that you have money for 30,000 uh, US dollars, okay? That could be in the form of a financial statement, uh, a bank statement, savings account, uh, loan approval letters. Sometimes uh, you can uh, get a loan from your government or from another organization, okay? If you receive a scholarship, you will get with your acceptance letter, a letter that you also received a scholarship and it's gonna have the amount of the scholarship. So if you apply to a college or university where the tuition and the housing um, and meals, et cetera, for one semester are $15,000 and you received a scholarship of $5,000 each semester, that's $10,000, right? That you need to show that you have uh, for each semester. So your scholarship um, needs to be subtracted
from the uh, tuition and fees and expenses of the institution to come up with your net amount. And then that, and that net amount is what you need to show you have the ability to pay for. Okay, I hope that, I hope that makes uh, sense. <laughs> and, uh, and then when you go for your interview at the embassy um, and you talk to that uh, government official, you will be um, showing them also your scholarship letter that uh, you received. Okay. Um, employment information. Uh, these are other details and Education USA or really any uh, college or university international admissions office will guide you through the different documents you need um, to receive your I-20, okay? Um, housing sponsor documents, for example, if you live uh, off campus with um, your relative, uh, your relative has to fill out a form saying that um, I officially am uh, hosting this student to be living with me, <coughs> okay? If you get an apartment in New York City, okay, you have to show some documentation, how much rent is that gonna be, et cetera, et cetera, okay? It's difficult for international students to sign uh, leases for rent in general. Um, landlords who own the buildings, a lot of times usually don't rent uh, them out to international students. So you gotta get some advisement uh, on that. There are definitely opportunities uh, to rent apartments, but um, I just wanted to let you know about that. Okay, next uh, slide. Okay. So uh, I talked a little bit generally about uh, uh, colleges and universities and uh, studying in New York. Um, I'm just gonna talk a little bit about uh, Monroe College and then we'll finish it up in the next, um, let's say uh, 10 minutes or so. Uh, Monroe College, um, in general, um, I wanna let you know about who we are. I've been working at Monroe College for um, 25 years. I'm the senior vice president. Um, I've worked in a lot of different departments. I've worn a lot of different hats. Right now I'm helping out with uh, international admissions and enrollment. 30% of our students are international. We have a student body of about 7,000 students. <laughs> um, our niche uh, really is, we give a tremendous amount of support um, to international students. A lot of colleges and universities talk about it. At Monroe College, I think we really deliver on it. We're more career focused. Uh, we're more uh, professional focused. Our degrees, um, we have about 30 of them. Uh, we don't have uh, degrees in philosophy and literature and the liberal arts. We have more degrees uh, for industries where we know that there are jobs. Our goal at Monroe College is not only to educate you uh, with a fine education, but to um, strengthen your career and help you with uh, job opportunities when you're in school and then once you graduate. We're uh, more affordable um, in general than the average private college, um, especially in New York. Our tuition is around uh, $7,800 <coughs> per semester. Probably the average private college in the New York region is around 12,000 uh, to 15,000 US dollars. You know, expensive private colleges could be around 30,000 uh, US dollars per semester. 
So we're more of an affordable alternative for um, international students in terms of coming to New York. Um, for Monroe College, and I have our URL address here, um, all of the admissions requirements are online on our website. We use Salesforce. We don't have any paper uh, documents. Everything is digital. Students can um, upload all of their documents from their computer and it goes right into our uh, admissions database. And we help guide you through the whole process. For undergraduate degrees at Monroe College, which is your bachelor degree or an associate degree, which is the two year degree, we do not require SAT. Um, we look at your application, we look at your essay, we look at any external exams you took, we look at your transcript from high school. Um, if you've been to college or university already and you're transferring over, we look at that transcript. Um, your high school diploma, there's a $35 application fee, and then we like to interview uh, students for at least 15 minutes, either um, on Zoom or WhatsApp. Um, TOEFL or IELTS, th those are the English um, exams you could take. Um, we don't require them. <coughs> if you did take it, it's great. Um, we look at a score of 70 and above where you do not uh, need to take Monroe's English placement exam uh, when you arrive on the campus. Okay, next slide. For graduate study in our King Graduate School, we have a thousand uh, students. Um, we have the application online. There's a 500 word short essay, $50 application fee, uh, we look at your bachelor degree transcripts. Um, sometimes if you've been to graduate school already, we look at the graduate transcripts. And we uh, require to see your bachelor degree diploma. TOEFL and IELTS are not required. Uh, for Mexico, um, depending upon what school you went to, they might be recommended. But they're not required at Monroe. Um, we will. Um, have you do a written, a writing assessment from Mexico with the professors from the King Graduate School, where you'll email them uh, answers to certain questions live, and uh, they'll be able to assess your English. And then in the King Graduate School, all the applicants need to do an interview that takes about 25 minutes with the Dean or with one of the professors. Um, so it's a little bit more uh, formal, the application procedures for the master degrees. Okay, next slide. I mentioned this before, um, but just kind of gives you a nice little snapshot of how our tuition ranks compared to an average private college or university tuition or the most expensive. And again, like I said in the beginning, the public colleges and universities are usually, not always, but usually the most affordable route. So you could see, for example, um, City University of New York, Hunter College, um, they might have a tuition that's less than Monroe's uh, tuition. Okay, so do your research. Um, look at uh, the tuition of the different institutions um, and, uh, you know, just look at, uh, you know, all the different things that are really important to you. Okay, next slide. <coughs> uh, I mentioned this before, but um, when you know what your price tag is, for uh, studying, uh, and this applies to Monroe College as well, uh, know what are your funding sources uh, through your sponsor or for yourself. 
uh, personal funding, bank loans. Uh, Monroe College, we do grant a fair amount of uh, scholarships. Um, and grants, uh, scholarships are usually based primarily on academics. Grants are money, additional money you receive, but it's usually based on your uh, economic level uh, and financial needs. Okay, and then do a little research. Maybe there's some organizations in Mexico, maybe the government um, has some funding opportunities for studying in the United States. Education USA would be your best source to get all that information. Okay, keep going. Okay, keep going. Okay, just in, in general, Monroe College, um, we have two main campuses in New York. One campus is in a lovely town called New Rochelle. That's about 30 minutes by train to Times Square, but you're like outside of New York City, it's quieter. It's near the Long Island Sound, I'm gonna to point to it. I don't know if you can, uh, actually, I don't know if you can see that, but it's like right up here, Maria. <laughs> okay. Um, then our next campus is in New York City. Um, it's in the borough um, in the Bronx, uh, right off the subway, the capital of hip hop, uh, very diverse. Uh, and the neighborhood is um, a safe one. And uh, literally the subway comes right in front of our buildings. You come down the subway train and you go into the, the buildings of the campus. Um, if you wanna live um, at the college on campus, you have to live in the New Rochelle campus, which is in um, Westchester, which I mentioned. And we have a thousand students uh, in the dorms there and they're really nice dorms, you know, really, really nice. Uh, like I mentioned before, New York City is incredibly diverse. Monroe College, incredibly diverse. Students from all over the world. Um, if you don't want diversity, then don't come to New York. <laughs> um, but if you want diversity, um, come to New York, uh, Monroe College. Um, it reflects a lot of the New York uh, city population. We have a big athletic program at Monroe College. Um, you could go onto our website, uh, soccer, football, baseball, volleyball, a lot of activities. Um, we have a shuttle bus that runs between our two campuses. Um, we actually have a, we have a campus in St. Lucia in the Caribbean. I don't think you're interested in going there, but um, you might be. And that's a nice small campus with about 300 students, beautiful island. And the tuition's really affordable down there. <laughs> so um, go to our website, you can check that out. And then we have an online campus. Okay, and I wanna talk to you about online uh, for you to think about with Monroe College or any um, university or college in uh, the United States. So you could start online in Mexico start earning credits if you get accepted. And then you could decide if you want to come to New York and study on site. Okay. You could also go to New York first and study and maybe work for, you know, one or two semesters and then finish up online in Mexico. Okay. So uh, Monroe College and the King Graduate School pretty much all of the degrees are totally online as well. So that could be of interest in terms of your life, in terms of what you could afford, in terms of your maybe work obligations in Mexico, uh, whatever your situation is, think about that option, okay? And I have some good news for you. At Monroe College, if you study online from Mexico, the tuition is 50% reduced, 50% reduced. So it's really more, much more affordable. 
and um, that's something uh, you think about doing. Um, right now, every student at the college, due to this public health situation, they're taking classes online and it's all web-based and it's actually going really, really well. So I feel really confident about our online programs and you really might wanna think about that for Monroe College as an option or for really any college or university. Um, and right now we're in April. Um, if you're thinking about uh, starting in September and you wanna apply for September, you know, you could also think about if you get accepted at uh, Monroe College or any institution, maybe over the summer, you could take classes online and start earning credits, okay? Okay, so um, I want to talk about that. And next slide, I think we're almost finished. Okay, academic programs, save it to last but all of the information's on our website. Um, I'm not gonna get into all the details here. Uh, in general, at Monroe College, we have a School of Criminal Justice. Um, it's one of our most popular degrees, especially with the New Yorkers. We have a robust um, allied health uh, science degree. Um, we have a degrees in public health and nursing, in uh, medical administration. Uh, other degrees you'll see online. Uh, business and Accounting, the School of Business, very popular for international students, earning your MBA, bachelor degree in marketing, finance, uh, human resources. Um, if you're interested in accounting, becoming a CPA. School of Education at Monroe College, we have a school in early childhood education that's kindergarten through third grade to become a teacher, licensed teacher. We have a great school, um, hotel and hospitality management and culinary arts, uh, where you earn your degree to work in the hotel and hospitality uh, field. Uh, we know that's a popular field um, in Mexico and other countries around the world. Uh, we have a very fine degree in nursing um, and in the United States, if you're a nurse and you earn your RN and you have your bachelor degree, your master's degree, you can make 80,000 US dollars a year, sometimes even a hundred thousand dollars a year or more. So in the United States, nursing could be a very, um, lucrative, uh, financially, um, well-paying profession. I know it's different in most countries around the world. Information technology, so many opportunities, right guys? So many opportunities. Um, at Monroe, you could earn your bachelor degree in computer science, your associate degree in computer science, master degree in computer science. And um, uh, there's great opportunities, you know, with that. Uh, you do take liberal arts courses at Monroe College, um, and they're fascinating. English, literature, philosophy, history, psychology. And you take those courses with your major. But at Monroe College, you cannot major in liberal arts, okay? But you'll find at a lot of other colleges and universities, you can major in the liberal arts, okay? Monroe's a little bit different that way, but we do uh, value that. Um, it's very important uh, you have an expansive education and um, that you earn your college degree, okay? And the question is, is why is earning your college degree important? Um, because companies and organizations, when they hire you, they get to know you a little bit, but they don't know you so much. So they need something to go by. And the fact that you have a college degree, it shows that you could write well, that you know how to do research, you know how to work in teams and work on projects, that you could think critically and 
that you're goal focused. Okay. So, um, you know, in the United States and um, around the world, the degree is very, very uh, important and it, it will open up a lot of opportunities for you. Uh, next slide. I think we're getting uh, almost done. And Monroe College, like I said, we call it real world education. Um, our faculty at Monroe College, they're from the industries. Um, you know, they, they know what the real world is and uh, we're a teaching institution. Uh, we're more career focused. Okay, so that's, you know, who we are. Uh, one more slide. Uh, just really quickly, I mentioned this, but this is the standard uh, semesters with colleges and universities. At Monroe College, we have an accelerated option because we have a spring semester, which goes from May to the end of July, and you could earn 15 credits. So you could accelerate your uh, degree at Monroe College. Other institutions usually have what's called a summer session. And you could earn credits, but it's usually on a smaller uh, scale. 120 credits you need for your bachelor degree. And for your master degree, you usually need between 36 credits and 45 credits after your bachelor degree. Keep going. <laughs> okay, so next steps, and we're gonna conclude it here and maybe I can answer questions. Again, research your best options for you and your family. Um, personal enrollment advising session, uh, Skype and Zoom. This is what we can uh, provide at Monroe College. Uh, if you're interested in Monroe College, submit your application online as soon as possible. And uh, start submitting your documents. Um, all the information is on the website. I'm your personal point person. And um, my email, I think, is at the end here. Uh, so you can email me anytime uh, to ask any questions. And I'm going to help you, guide you through. Thank you so much. Let me just give you my email address. It's E Jerome, E J E R O M E, at MonroeCollege.edu. Thank you so much. Great, thank you, Evan. Uh, now, uh, give me a second so I can unmute uh, Martha and she will go over the questions in just a sec. Okay, Martha, you are on mute now. Thank you, thank you, Yandy. Okay, well, uh, we we will go for uh, questions uh, time and uh, I will just ask to uh, try to keep these answers short because we are a little bit out of time. But okay, here we have Mike Pantoja is asking um, if, uh, is, if it is acceptable if he has a tourist visa. I think you, Evan, already talked about that part, but if you want to add something to, to his question. Um, yeah, to study um, and get accepted to a college or university in the United States, you need a student visa, not a tourist visa. And that's called an F1 student visa. So I, 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 um, the tourist visa wouldn't work um, if he wants to study full time in the United States. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, here is another question. Andre is asking, uh, maybe you can help for getting a, an LOA uh, to study there. Then I asked a little bit more about what LOA stands for. And then it, it, he says, I need recommendation from universities in there. Maybe you can guide me how to get LOA 
from the university in U.S. I, maybe he's referring to a loan. A loan, yeah, I was thinking the same, uh, referring to a loan. Then, well, he says this, I need recommendation from universities in there. And then he says, I hopefully can study in New York, at New York, for, uh, well, I, hope, I hopefully can study a PhD um, in New York. So maybe, yes, uh, Evan is about a loan. Uh, yeah, I mean, colleges and universities don't give loans uh, to international students. Yeah. Um, I think he's referring to scholarships. You know, he needs a scholarship. And, um, you know, depending upon uh, who he is, um, his experience, his application, his academics, your transcript, uh, your recommendations, you might be able to get a scholarship. You know, you might be able to get a scholarship. Uh, what the amount is, et cetera, et cetera, you have to just communicate um, with different colleges and universities. Perfect. Uh, thank you, Evan. Itza. Itza is asking, if I want to take a CPT internship, should I ask the permission to work before applying to the internship or after applying? Should you um, say the question one more time? If I want to take a CPT internship, should I ask the permission to work before applying? to the CPT, uh, to the internship, or after applying? I think it's just, uh, she needs a permission to work before uh, applying to this CPT internship. Yeah, I'm not sure if she's saying, do you ask permission of the college or university? Um, pretty much, you know, any college or university, I think will be open to doing having you do the CPT. Um, colleges might have different policies. Again, it's usually for the bachelor degree, you could only do CPT after two semesters. You know, that's what we do at Monroe College. But for master degrees, you know, you could technically start in your first semester. Uh, most colleges and universities um, are flexible to that, but again, every college and university is different. If you go for your MBA at Monroe College, the courses are in the evening for the most part, 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. and on the weekends. So you have time during the day to possibly work. Okay, if you get accepted to Columbia University's full-time MBA program, during the day, you're going to be really busy with classes and schoolwork. You know, you're not going to have uh, time, you know, to work um, at a company immediately. So um, you have to find out what the situation is. Um, but I would say um, you want to do two things. I would say wait till you get accepted to the college or university and then start researching CPT opportunities. I think the, that first chapter, getting accepted, that's the most important to do first. Okay, so here is another question from Itza. Uh, when renting off campus in New York City, what's the best way to deal with the required minimum annual income? 40 to 40 times monthly rent, as an international student? Um, yes, yeah, so if you're living um, off campus in New York City, and let's say you um, are getting an apartment in uh, Manhattan, and you have a roommate, or you're getting your own apartment, um, you need to provide that information, uh, the apartment, the address, what is the rent amount 
per month to the CVIS advisor at the college or university who's going to be issuing your I-20, okay? If the rent is $1,000 a month, then uh, two semesters, that could be about eight months. So it, that's like $8,000. You need to um, show that you have the income to cover that uh, rent amount. I think that kind of answers it. It's perfect. And uh, Mariana, Mariana is asking, as international and grad student, can I work the first year semester of my studies? Yes, as an international graduate student, there's more flexibility in working in your first uh, semester. To, um, to work legally, you need to get a work permit um, in the United States and you need to get a social security number, it's called, okay? Um, I could only talk about uh, Monroe College, but it probably applies to other uh, colleges and universities. Once um, you receive a job offer, uh, your company needs to send you, you know, a letter, an email with the position and a description of the position. That letter uh, needs to get approved usually by your academic dean at the institution. And then you need to bring it to the career services department. The career services department will then help you apply for your social security number and your work permit. If it goes well, that takes about three weeks. Okay, at least at Monroe College, I, I don't know, at other colleges, maybe three weeks to a month, okay? Um, when, it's, when the um, CPT is approved by the academic department and then the career services department helps you get your social security number and work permit, then you could start working. Perfect. Uh, her second question is, based on your experience, what's, what's the cheapest option to live over there, on campus or off campus? Um, you know, every college or university, the housing cost is different. At Monroe College, for about 4,000 uh, US dollars, you can live in the dorms and then you get three meals in our cafeteria and the food's, you know, really pretty good. Um, if you really want to go cheap, um, probably the cheapest is what's called family homestay, where um, there's families um, in the New York region that could be open to taking you in and um, giving you a place to stay and uh, maybe giving you dinner um, and breakfast and you would pay the family a certain amount each month, okay? Or there might be some really cheap apartments, but again, in New York City, you know, uh, the cheaper the apartment, the poorer the neighborhood, right? So you have to just um, keep all that in mind in general. Okay, but there's a lot of situations. Okay, you might, you might have a friend who has a beautiful apartment um, and they would love to have you as a roommate or you have a, a relative. Uh, you know, staying with a relative for free, that's your cheapest option. Okay, her third question. Um, I got admitted to Monroe College and I was awarded with a scholarship 55%. What's the best way to pay for the rest? Do you recommend loans? I think it was uh, the new school, not Monroe College. Ah, uh, the new school, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Okay, well, if you, got a, if you got a really nice scholarship from the new school, 
that's good because I know the new school is expensive. Um, and uh, it's in Manhattan. So the new school, they'll, they'll have a policy um, in terms of what you need to do with payment before they register you. Registration means actually putting you in classes where you're, you know, on the schedule for the semester. So um, at a, a college and university, they might say, you need to pay your first semester um, in full, okay, before you get registered, okay? Or they might say, you know what, uh, that 50% that you still owe us, um, we could put you on a payment plan where you pay um, once a month, okay? <laughs> and, you know, colleges and universities, they have pretty sophisticated systems. Uh, you know, in, at Monroe College, students enroll in the payment programs um, where they go to the website. It could get deducted directly from your bank account or your sponsor's bank account. You know, but every college and university, they'll have a different uh, plan for that. Perfect. Okay, well, um, Evan, thank you very much. Uh, I think there is no more questions. If uh, the people who is still um, with us have any other questions, you can also uh, write to Evan. Uh, he has provided his email address. Also, Jandi uh, put in the chat this information. If you have any other question for Education USA, uh, here is our contact information. Uh, we, uh, I invite all of you to visit our official website. It's uh, right now uh, at the slide. And uh, follow as well, um, follow Education USA through social media. So you will find uh, within these platforms uh, all our events. And I invite you as well, the 14th and 16th of April, we will be talking as info sessions uh, like this one as a webinar. And we will talk about uh, the requirements and general information and as well detailed information about this process um, for admission uh, of application for admission in, into an institution in the US. So thank you very much for everyone for joining us. And thank you again, Evan, and looking forward to so much, collaborate together for thank other you webinars. Thank you so much. Buenas noches. Thank you, Evan. Buenas. Be safe. Muchas gracias. Bye. Gracias. Thank you. Thanks.